Welcome back to my channel, and listen with me to Strange Stories featured here. I'm forever thankful for the Reddit users sharing their personal stories with me. As always, we have our glitch in the Matrix stories, a ghost story, some teleporting or losing time stories. If you are new to the channel, like and subscribe for more content and to keep this channel alive. And if you have stories of your own, feel free to send them to storyscary152 at gmail.com. We start off with Jumpy underscore independent 436 posted a question about the Mandela effect and Anonymous is first to comment. A question about the Mandela effect and why are we affected and others not affected. It's not a binary affected or not affected. The terms I would use are subliminal or superliminal. Even before the Mandela effect became superliminal for me, it was there. I had a few random ones here and there. I just put them down to mistakes of memory or glitch in reality or who knows what. Becoming superliminal is a question of being pushed above a threshold of awareness where you realize that the idea that it could be a mistake of memory or some other simple Homer Simpson doe moment is not even a remote possibility. What exactly will push someone above the threshold is, I think, different for different individuals. Some are more sensitive than others. And so it could be that people who are visiting this subreddit just happen to have a lower threshold to go from subliminal to superliminal. The Mandela effect has only ratcheted in extent and intensity since 2014 when it first became superliminal for me. I cannot imagine what would cause it to stop or reverse course. Given that we're already remapping the entire globe, history, celestial motions, anatomy, and everything else at whim, why should the Mandela effect stop? Like it will eventually become ashamed of itself and realize it's gone too far. Assuming it will only increase in intensity from now on, that means that the threshold of superliminal is being constantly lowered, and so I predict that we will see more people becoming superliminal with respect to the Mandela effect at an accelerating rate. To directly answer the original post, we're just first by a random distribution of sensitivity to whatever is causing the Mandela effect. Somebody had to be first, and it's us. Eventually, I predict that everyone is going to be awakened, meaning superliminal. It is not difficult to argue that many will be driven to madness by it, and this will reach epidemic proportions when we get into the power curve. Prepare for more weirdness than ever before. John 2010 also comment on the post. This might be the craziest theory I've thought of, but it's also why I don't bring up many conspiracy theories and concepts in this group. Basically, it's the darkest version of the rabbit hole, but it's that the whole feeling of being special when we are born or when we were young was real. Like we're special or that the universe is meant or created just for us. Well, maybe there is a person or group of people who are hidden within our world, and the only way for the evil powers to be would be for them to manipulate the universe. Basically, there is a cosmic war of good and evil, and the good can be manipulated, but the evil cannot. And with the new age of the internet, it's a lot easier to manipulate us. Things like this group and conspiracy groups are probably great ways to find people like us to research and manipulate easier. I'm Auspicious Snoot on Reddit. Predictions and Synchronicities My thoughts on this topic mainly stem from a silly drinking game I play with my friends called Fingers. If you haven't heard of this game before, I'll give a quick explanation. Basically, everyone circles around a shot glass and puts one finger on it. One at a time, someone will try to guess how many fingers will be on the glass after they count down. When it's your turn, you count down 3, 2, 1 and call out a number while everyone else can either take their finger off or leave it on right as you call the number. If you correctly guess the number of fingers on the glass, you're safe and no longer guess. Whoever is last without successfully guessing the number of fingers loses and they take the shot. As a college student, I've come to play this game a lot and I've noticed that my odds of winning seem statistically unlikely. I rarely lose and most of the time I end up guessing correctly on my first try, which is more unlikely as there are more people playing at the beginning and it's more difficult to guess the correct number. Now this might seem silly, but sometimes it feels like I'm predicting the future with my guesses. It's almost like I know the answer before I even guess. When I play I never think about my guess, 
I count down and blurt out whatever number comes first to my mind, and the majority of the time it's right. My friends have even commented to me that my odds of winning are super high for a game of chance. And a funny thing, am I guessing correctly, it's almost like I know I was wrong before I even count the fingers on the glass, and the same thing happens when I'm correct. These are not the only events that I seem to have statistically unlikely odds with. Other events that stick out to me have occurred when I'm walking out late at night. I can pick out a couple of specific instances where I'm walking under a light or a street lamp and I think to myself, I think that light is going to go out and it immediately does. I've always chalked these experiences up to luck, but I've come to change my tune after reading Diana Pasolka's book American Cosmic, which touches on synchronicities and the likes. Here is a passage from Vali that I really like from her text. Is it possible to promote coincidences and peculiar effects by systematically creating physical information structures? Consciousness could be defined as the process by which informational associations are retrieved and traversed. Have you guys ever had any predictions or synchronicities that seemed odd or uncanny? Do you think that our overarching consciousness can manifest our own will into the physical universe to a very small extent? If possible, what does that entail for the nature of our reality? Maybe this lends to the theory that all of the time is occurring all at once instead of as a single reference frame that we experience each second. Would love to hear your thoughts. I'm darktoast underscore on Reddit. Frequent synchronicities with no apparent meaning. I've been getting multiple number sequences every day without even looking for them. I always end up glancing over at the clock and seeing repeating numbers of all kinds, sometimes multiple per day. This has been going on for a couple of years now, and I've tried to make sense of them, but I can't seem to find any meaning behind them. Apparently, these numbers are meant to signify communication with angels, but the exact message they are trying to send isn't clear to me. Has anybody else in this subreddit experienced this? If so, how did you clear up the communication and receive the messages? There is still a skeptical voice in me that thinks this is all insignificant, but these numbers have become so frequent that they can't be deemed a coincidence. Anyways, thanks for taking the time to read if you're here. Would love to hear some feedback. Sending love and positive energy your way. I'm Vamplexia on Reddit. The beer bottle changed brands on me today, and I will die on that hill. Edited for grammar and spelling, so I work at a bar, and I'm the only daytime bartender available on staff at the moment. One of my main jobs is to make sure liquor and beer are stocked and ready for the dinner rush. When it's slow, I literally fully stock it to the bram as much as possible. Sell three beers, go get those three to replace them, etc. So it's like 2 p.m., and I notice we have some holes in the beer stock. I have a slow period, so I write a list. One Coors Light, two lagers, one bottle well vodka, one bottle mescal, one bottle merlot. I take my list upstairs to our stockroom to grab the items. I remember grabbing the Coors Light and commenting to myself, hmm, the 24-pack is in a different place than it usually is, which makes me look at the bottle as I pick it up, and I clearly read Coors Light. Okay, cool. I get my items and head back down to the bar to put them in their respective homes. Here's where things get interesting. The missing beer that I wrote down as Coors Light is not missing. The Coors are fully stocked. The Miller Light next to it, however, is missing one single beer. Okay, no big deal. I must have mistaken the brand. It happens. Instead of going back upstairs to trade beers, I decided to put the Coors Light on the empty bottom shelf and decide to grab a Miller Light later. So that's what I do. I put a single bottle of Coors Light on the bottom shelf. I close the cooler and go about doing some other work for the next shift. About a half hour later, a few of my regulars come in, and I know the one lady likes Bud Light, so I turn around to grab it out of the cooler and see that the Coors Light on the bottom shelf is different. The Coors Light that I almost dropped on my way down the stairs to place it in its home, the Coors Light that I stared at three separate times and made mental notes about is gone. In its place, a bottle of Miller Light. Miller Light, not Coors Light. No one was behind my bar, but me. I will swear on whatever you want me to. I am dead certain that beer was a Coors Light. 
but sitting in its place on the bottom shelf is a single bottle of Miller Lite. I'm sorry for the grammar and spelling. I'm on mobile and very flustered. The crazy thing is today, within the same four-hour period, three separate people in my immediate world have had glitch stories. Their glitch stories are in the comments. I was a mild follower before, but now I am 100% convinced the Matrix glitched today. TLDR Working the day shift at a bar, I make a list of beer to stock. Coors Light is missing, so I need to grab it. Go to stock the missing Coors Light bottle. Vividly remember grabbing the Coors Light. When retrieved, the Coors bottle is no longer needed for stock, but a Miller Light is. Figured I must have been mistaken, so I put the Coors bottle on a separate shelf and forget about it for a half hour. Goes to grab a different beer for customers, and the Coors bottle is no longer Coors. The bottle has transformed into Miller Lite. I'm FitGlass7785 on Reddit. Okay, I am really glad to be able to share this story, because while I was excited when it happened, I was also really freaked out. A few years ago for Christmas, I bought my mom and my sister-in-law a small 8-cup food processor. The one for my mom was red, and the one for my sister-in-law was blue. I remember thinking, I wish I could get a red one for myself. Christmas passes. They didn't know that I wanted a small one because I already have a bigger one handed down to me. Fast forward a few months and my husband and I are packing to move. I open a cabinet, one that I've opened numerous times before, but is tucked away. And in it, there is the exact same food processor in red color. I called my mom asking if she still had hers, and sure enough, she did, I saw it the next day. No one got me this extra food processor. At the time my husband and I were so strained on cash, I didn't want to buy anything extra so he didn't get it either. She told me she swore she didn't get it for me, and like I said, no one knew I wanted one just like it for myself. Like I didn't even tell anyone. I just took it as a fun gift from God or the universe, and was like, well, guess I have a food processor now. Seriously, it appeared out of thin air. I love the thing, though. Still going strong after a few years, so I hope Ultimate Me doesn't take it back. I'm Aztec Whistle 9989 on Reddit. Today, I was in the living room and saw something strange on the back porch. It was a hand going across the door. The door has a curtain on it and has a window next to it and a wall on the other side. Even if it was a bird, it makes no sense since birds can't teleport through walls, and I did not see a bird or a person through the window next to the door. I went outside to check afterward, and no one or a bird was there. Could this have been a ghost? And in the living room and back porch is where I have experienced similar things. A few minutes later, I noticed that there is a slit in the curtain like someone opened it, which is impossible since the curtain is inside the door and a person could not touch it. This ties into another experience I had a while back that I posted on this subreddit link to other experiences to follow. So last night, I woke up at 12.30 a.m. and I was feeling thirsty, so I went to my kitchen to get a glass of water from the kitchen. As I was walking to the kitchen, I saw a shadow figure in the living room. The shadow figure wasn't an adult though, it was a child, and they were behind the couch. The child saw me and did this sort of quick crouch walk like they were playing tag or hide and seek and went away. I went to go look behind the couch and saw nothing. I immediately got goosebumps straight after. It's the next day, and I heard footsteps exactly where the child was, but they were soft and subtle footsteps like the child was creeping up on me to scare me. The next day again, I see the reflection of the sunlight on the wall, and half of it disappears as if someone is running back and forth. It looks like the ghost child having fun, like it's running around. I looked out the window and nobody is there, and I also saw a gray mist go up to the ceiling in my living room. I and my mom both noticed the same thing and thought it was strange. I'm Wake of Terra on Reddit. Is the Tootsie Pop star a Mandela effect? There are a ton of people who believe that if you found a star next to the Native American's arrow on your Tootsie Pop wrapper, you could turn it into the store for a free Tootsie Pop. But it turns out this was never true, and the Tootsie Company is constantly having to debunk this claim. They also say the star appears just as frequently as any other image on the wrapper, 
I'm calling BS on this one. I bought dozens of Tootsie Pops as a kid trying to find one with a star, and I rarely did. I also remember the star and the free pop promotion being advertised on TV. I think this could be a Mandela effect hiding in plain sight. What do you guys think? The following story is not a Mandela effect, but comments on the previous story, and I don't usually include comments, but this is such a feel-good story he is sharing, and a lesson all of us can learn. I'm C. Okra on Reddit, and yeah, we had a corner store. It was a shop like a gas station, except no gas. We called it the Not Gas Station because my stepdad's creativity was strictly limited to inventive home repairs and writing incredibly touching notes to his wife and daughters when we were having a tough time. Damn, I wish I still had some of those. What was I saying? That would give you a free Tootsie Pop for a star rapper. He, one of the owners, the other just put the wrappers in a box, pasted them all over the wall behind his cash register. He was quite pleased with his collection. Weird thing is, I knew the Star Redemption thing was an urban legend because I read about it in an urban legends book. But because that one shop honored it my entire childhood, part of me really thinks it had to have been a real thing at some point, and I gotta remind myself it's an urban legend. In hindsight, I suspect the dude that redeemed the rappers did it just because the lollipops were cheap and it got kids to come into his shop. He loved kids, not in a sicko way or anything, at least he never tried anything on anyone I knew. We had one woman on the block who was certain he was a perv and was always asking us about him. It was 100% a race thing because the brothers were Middle Eastern and had thick accents. She never accused the actual pervert in the neighborhood of anything. But he just enjoyed when kids would visit his store, and he gave us discounts and stuff that he didn't offer to many adults. If he liked you, though, you'd always get some sort of discount or a little freebie. That was true of his brother, too. They were very kind guys. Sorry, I'm weepy tonight, coming up on nine years without my dad and 16 without my stepdad. September was a special month to both of them, and this thread brought up a happy memory. Another cute thing about the Not Gas Station brothers, the one who liked us kids got married and the whole shop was decorated to celebrate it. The older brother did it, he never married, or if he did it was after I moved, but he was S-U-P-E-R excited when his brother got hitched. I came in a few weeks after the wedding with a little gift for him. It was just some, badly, I was 11 and had crushed it for maybe two months, hot pads and cotton dish scrubbers, but I'd made them especially for him and was a bit proud of it. He opened the box and looked at the stuff, then started praising how good they were and how wonderful and ran to get his new wife and show her. He introduced me as his little friend Okra, and I felt grown up that a nice adult considered me his friend. She was really sweet, but spoke very little English back then. It improved fast, though. Within a year she spoke English so well you'd never guess she'd struggled with it ever, and was picking things up between two fingers and speaking Arabic. And stuff and being an anxious little shit, I was freaked and thought she hated them so much she couldn't touch them. Then his brother starts translating that apparently, she thought they were beautiful, and she loved the colors. They were gold and purple, which in my heart felt luxurious and sophisticated, but probably was pretty dumb looking. They hella clashed. Looking back on it, maybe those brothers just adored kids because we didn't call them nasty names, some people did, and accuse them of being terrorists. But they were really nice, and I hope the world has rewarded their kindness. I'm Dr. Princess 4 on Reddit, and thoughts on the Black Tom explosion. Hi guys, I'm new to this thread, and fairly new to Reddit in general. I joined because the Mandela effect is fascinating to me. The mystery of something possibly beyond our power of understanding, but also trying to come up with rational ways to explain examples of the effect. With that in mind, I came across the Black Tom explosion only a few days ago, and have been thinking about it since. It puzzled me because I can't explain it away as easily as something like the Berenstain Bears, which I believe probably happened because people filled in Steen rather than Stain, since Steen is a more common surname ending. But Black Tom is weird because of how significant it supposedly was, whilst being mentioned virtually nowhere until recently. So here's my attempt at a partial explanation. 
I believe that there are not a lot of accounts of it from around World War I and the 1920s, because at that time it wasn't proven that it was due to German saboteurs, only suspected. Reading the Wikipedia article, it sounds like initially many people wrote it off as likely an industrial accident, and in the context of the time, an explosion only killing four or maybe seven. People were not a bad industrial accident. The Triangle Shirtwaist Fire that killed 146 people was only five years prior, and the Halifax explosion came just a year after Black Tom, killing 1,950 and pretty much decimating Halifax. I think in context, those far more by the time Germany was formally declared responsible for Black Tom in 1939, Pearl Harbor was to come along just two years later. So an immensely more tragic event, with much more immediate implications, overshadowed the public memory of Black Tom yet again, and it was only recently that the public became more aware of it again. Devastating events probably stuck more in people's minds. Obviously, this doesn't explain everything. If it was the impetus for the U.S. to enter World War I, it should have been more well-known in history classes at least. And also it doesn't explain why there was suddenly a surge in awareness of it a couple of years ago. But I think this goes a slight way in trying to explain this phenomenon of a significant event going virtually forgotten for so long. What are other people's thoughts on this? I'm breaking my habit on Reddit. I'm not a superstitious person. I don't believe in ghosts or anything like that, and I've never experienced anything like this before. But after what just happened, I'm covered in goosebumps, and I don't have an explanation. Terrifying. My boyfriend texted me that he was going to bed from his office. I got up a couple of minutes after he sent that and headed to the bedroom. When I opened the door, I saw him lying down in bed, facing away from me towards the wall. I swear I saw him and his hair. I asked if he was okay, and I heard him mumble a response, didn't completely hear, but it was his voice. I looked away for a split second to put down my water bottle on my nightstand, and he was suddenly gone. I panicked. I thought maybe he was playing a prank on me and was hiding behind the bed. I told him it wasn't funny, and I asked where he went. It's a narrow bedroom, so he couldn't have walked past me. I go to look behind the bed, absolutely losing my shit, and he isn't there. I keep asking where he went, hoping that he will come out, and it's all a joke. He wasn't hiding anywhere behind or under the bed. I'm still freaked out because I was sure I also heard his voice and saw him. At this point, I go back into the hallway completely panicked, and a few seconds later, my boyfriend walks out of his office. He was really confused to see me so panicked and asked what was wrong. I didn't even know how to start to explain. He was never in the bedroom. We are both freaked out. Any explanations are very welcome, and I hate this. And subconscious underscore zebra comment. As whacked as that is, yeah. I started to consider the reality of it when I began looking for reasons for my own effing up incidences that I knew were not paranormal. There are far too many legit stories from around the globe of glitchy events, things duplicating, notes written in one's own handwriting, things appearing, time lost or gained, could be abductions, others having totally different memories, quantum immortality stories, etc., for it to be all entity or supernatural activity. I've got plenty of first-hand personal entity stories. Some of them sound like old-school ghost or spirit stories, but many are just too personal. As if there are weak spots along the vertical timeline which allow bits of our lives to seep through or cross over, including ourselves or our physical things. I have no proof, but who does? But I do have enough experience in both the supernatural and this glitchy shit to recognize and feel a difference. So, yeah, I believe that something legit is going on with our perception of time and dimension, that perhaps the theories of our reality splitting with each major decision we make, like all those rom-com movies, aren't that nuts. I'm Audrey Cooper 666 on Reddit. I think my vape transported across my bedroom. Last night after finishing cleaning my kitchen and bathroom, I got ready for bed, sat down to call my parents, and hit my Nick vape. After hanging up, I laid down and put my vape to the right of my pillow as per usual. I started playing a game on my phone and hit my vape a few times.
I stopped playing the game and messaged with a few friends. I had not left my bed at all as I was winding down after a few hours of cleaning, as I said, and I just wanted to relax. So I went to grab my vape next to the pillow and it was gone. No big deal, there's plenty of memes about having to stand up and look for them every 15 minutes when you're sitting or lying down. So I proceeded with the normal trill. I sat up and picked up my pillows and also peeked behind the headboard to see if it slipped on the ground, but no dice. Next I stood up, took my blanket off, and shook it out to no avail, and I proceeded to do the same with my top sheet. I was getting weirded out by now because it was nowhere in my immediate area. So I started looking behind and inside the bedside table, on the floor, when in the kitchen and my spare room. So finally I come back in the room and think, oh right, I didn't check my dresser. The reason for that is I really had no reason to. I barely touched the top of it and had pulled clean pajamas out of my hamper. I had grabbed some antiperspirant about three hours prior, but I had since hit my vape, and I know I hadn't set it there. I have a lamp on my dresser that's base has about a one inch lip around it so you could possibly put stuff there you pull out of your pocket and don't want to lose. My vape was sitting there on or in the base of the lamp. I have no idea how it got there. I wasn't wearing pants with pockets at all today and it's just not a place I would put something I'm planning on using. I was completely sober when this happened and have an annoyingly accurate memory of minute details of things. I don't know if this would count as a time slip, like it could have happened where I went from lying down to putting my vape on the lamp to lying back down and not experienced it. Also don't really believe in the paranormal to the extent I would think some entity moved it. Could I have simply put it there and forgot? Very possibly, but the entire thing just feels off. I'm my theme, 1949. The no longer their house. We moved into our home last year. A small, fairly new property with an odd layout that's out of character with the other houses around, most being quite old. Family and friends are not keen on the house, but we like it. There's a certain quirky charm. We have a long, thin, overgrown garden at the back. To the right, our neighbor's garden, tidy and a lot wider. To our left, we back on to the end of three other gardens, these houses being on the next street but backing onto ours. A few weeks ago after a storm, while repairing the damage to a couple of fence panels, I realized something. Now there seemed to be only two houses to the left. It was a strange feeling. This subreddit was one of the first things that came to mind. Maybe we miscounted. The thing is we remember details about the no longer their house. The houses are or were attached. One end house belonging to an old couple keen on gardening. The other end to a solitary older man with an aggressive dog. The middle house, the one that has gone, belonged to a family with teenage children. We remember noticing their old pirate-themed playhouse complete with flag when we first came to view our home to be. Sometimes we would see the older son playing his computer from our upstairs window. Now we cannot even see his window, just a large tree obscuring the view growing in the corner of the gardening couple's property. The missing house had a trampoline in the garden. Before we could see from standing in the middle of ours and a small yappy dog often running about, all gone. The two houses left are still attached. Each has several large trees growing in their gardens. We don't remember there being quite so many. The solitary older man's garden now seems too wide compared to his neighbors. It doesn't affect us. It's just slightly unsettling and kind of cool in an odd way. There was another house here. It's gone now. I'm Lamb on Reddit. I have been reluctant to post my story these past two years since it happened because it's not an insane huge thing what happened, like other stories we see here. I was going over and over in my head to make sure it wasn't a hallucination or other explainable thing. But for number two, I really have exhausted my options, so if you guys have a reasonable explanation, drop in the comments, please. Two years ago, me and my girl moved to a different city and rented a room in a shared house. It was a very small room, just space for a closet, a bed, a table, and one of those small fridge. Don't know if you got a word for it in English. After a few months there, Coven have hit, and one of the times I went out to buy supplies I also bought, of course, four beers. I've put all four in our small fridge. I opened one, she opened one. 
I finished first and got my other one in the fridge, don't remember if the thing had happened by then or not, and then she asked me to get another one for her shortly after. To my surprise, when I opened the fridge again, absolutely no beer was there. It should have one. Hers. The fridge was empty. We used the main fridge downstairs for other stuff we wouldn't use soonish, so it was easy to see that there was literally no beer, no nothing in there. I asked her to look with me. She was pissed off at me at first, thinking I drank hers too. Then she confirmed that she wasn't seeing the beer also. I went over the store receipt. Four beers, I didn't miscount. Looked everywhere around the room, she helped as well. We only found the three empty bottles. She took a picture of the empty fridge and sent to a friend that replied, Yep, nothing there. So maybe hallucination is out of the table. We went to sleep that night. She left soon to work. Essential worker and restrictions were also not that bad yet. I worked from home so stayed in the room all day, even checked the fridge again just in case she was trying to prank me. Nothing there. Went out to meet her by the station and also buy one more thing for the meal I'd cook that I had forgotten the day before. Bought also some yogurt, and when I went upstairs, opened the small fridge to store the yogurts. What the F do I see there staring back at me? The F and lost beer. To this day, I have absolutely no idea what happened. If it was a glitch, have the beer entered a multiverse for some hours and got back. Was it all in our heads? As I said, it's not a super fantastic story, but it was absurdly weird to experience, especially for me being a very skeptical person. I'm Yai Anks on Reddit. About a year ago, I ordered my boyfriend a shirt. Probably not relevant, but it was an orange unearthed band t-shirt. The first time he wore it a week or so later, he was doing yard work outside, and when he came in, I noticed a rip in the back, near his right shoulder blades about four inches wide. I pointed it out and said something like, wow, you could've just said you don't like it. We laughed. I forget what he said back. It's kind of a running joke between us that he hates my gifts, lol. Yesterday, I was doing laundry and came to this shirt. The rip is gone. Completely gone. I showed my boyfriend, and he clearly remembers the day it got ripped. Remembers the brief conversation, and us laughing. I don't know how long it's been gone. If it's been a while and I just didn't notice or... He doesn't wear it regularly. I assumed because of the tear, but maybe he really just hates it, haha. We've tried to think of any possible explanation, but just stumped. I'm insignificant on Reddit. I was dreaming the other night and realized it was a dream. My mind became completely conscious at that moment, and my entire body vibrated something fierce. At the same time, I am hearing this intense zipping sound, like the vibrations themselves were making these loud noises in my ears. It felt like a roller coaster, too. I opened my eyes and everything mostly stopped, but I could feel vibrations in my face and jaw still. What was this? I'm Alpha Domestic on Reddit, and my giraffe keychain changed to an elephant keychain. How is it possible? A neighbor brought us animal keychains from her recent trip to Africa. She gave us a choice between cheetahs, giraffes, and lions. My two children and I chose one of each. The incredible thing is that a few days later, my giraffe keychain became an elephant keychain, and I noticed it right away. Faced with my perplexity, I asked my children and the neighbor, and they said that I chose an elephant. I am 100% sure that it was a giraffe. When she gave us the options, there were no elephants at all. I am really sure. Did my keychain glitch or change timelines? I'm Big Lil Bry on Reddit, and while I was driving and got transported to another place. So I went to go pick up food from a restaurant at the mall. I've been to this restaurant a ton of times. I got back to my car after picking up my food, put my GPS on, and started driving my usual route. There's this loop on the way to my boyfriend's house that I have to take on the highway that I always remember because it's a little tricky to merge back onto the highway. I took this loop and headed in the direction of my boyfriend's house, which I am used to. I blanked out for a sec, looked down at my GPS, because I didn't recognize where I was and I noticed there was a turnaround coming up on my GPS. I look up and realize I'm approaching the light where I turn left to go to the mall restaurant. I was so confused because there was no way I could've gotten off the highway after the loop and gone back in the direction of the mall. 
I looked at my GPS just to double check if I accidentally put in another address because maybe I was in car hypnosis and ended up looking at my GPS and going the wrong way, but no, it was directing me to my boyfriend's house. I always put my GPS on out of habit, even when I know where I'm going just to keep up with delays, etc. I was so confused and shaken up by this because I have no remembrance between getting off the loop and merging and then ending up back near the mall. I am still so confused about how this happened. Also yesterday, I was driving with my boyfriend and there was a tow truck transporting a small truck. I looked in the small truck and saw a man in it in glowing lights, like he had neon lights in his car or a bright radio display or something. I immediately pointed out to my boyfriend because I thought it was funny that a guy was just chilling in his truck while getting towed. I speed up and get near it so my boyfriend can see, and surprise, surprise. Nobody was in the car. What is happening? Has anyone here had a similar experience? I'm Sleepy Bean 21 on Reddit. I have about a 45-minute commute, and I take the same route nearly every single day to work. Exceptions being if my GPS alerts me of a crash or other traffic obstruction. Nonetheless, I'm very familiar with the route I drive. This morning, about 25 minutes into my drive, I noticed a car pulled over in the left-hand shoulder of the highway, with a police car behind them. I distinctly remember seeing the blue and red lights flashing and thinking to myself, Wow, glad my morning didn't start that way. As I approached closer to the car, I checked my speed and moved from the far left fast lane to the center lane. I didn't want to take any chances. As I switched lanes, a utility van happened to pass by me, taking my original spot in the fast lane. This is where the glitch happened. The van was larger than my small SUV, but not so large that I couldn't see traffic ahead of or around it. I kept an eye out for the police officer or pulled over car on the shoulder simply out of natural curiosity. Suddenly. It was as if the scene completely disappeared. There was no car pulled over, no flashing lights. Everything was completely gone. Just an empty shoulder lane. It was so strange. As I approached the scene, I remember internally thinking, wouldn't it be weird to drive by and this cop car no longer be there? And then it happened. It was as if my subconscious was aware it would occur. I'm Mima Warwick Yumi on Reddit. Context. I walked home from work and I was absolutely knackered because I was worked to the bone today and got out two brioches and laid down in my bed. Now my bed is joined together with my little sister's bed so she doesn't roll off when she sleeps so essentially it's one big bed, two beds pushed into one. Anyway, so I had two brioches in my hand, one I bit into and one that was unbitten. I tossed them both onto my bed. Yeah, I know I didn't have a plate, Oh well, but I could only find my unbitten brioche. After ripping both beds inside out, I came to the conclusion that I must have eaten it and forgotten about it. I scroll on Reddit for around 15 minutes before I turn my flashlight on and lo and behold, my half-bitten brioche. You might be thinking you must have not seen it, but I checked my bed thoroughly. I know I did. When I found my brioche, it was placed in a way that I'm sure I would have seen initially. It was placed so obviously that I got spooked because it wasn't there before. Any answers? Cause I'm fairly new to this sub. I'm 17 Demon Dicks on Reddit. I think I stepped into a parallel universe for a moment. This happened when I was around 18 or 19, but I remember it vividly because of how jarring and confusing it was. I've had a few odd experiences with dreams, but nothing in the middle of the day like this. So when this happened, I was still living at home with my parents, and we lived in my childhood home. This home was pretty much all I ever knew, as we moved there when I was three years old. I had a habit of going on daily walks in the nearby park, something I did nearly every single day since I was 14 or 15 years of age up until I moved out. It was the summer, around 1 or 2 p.m., and I went to leave the house for one of my walks. I slipped my shoes on and went to open the door as usual but when I stepped out of the house and looked up, my neighborhood felt completely wrong. It didn't look different. Everything looked exactly the same as it usually did. The small ravine next to our house, the tree in the front yard, the steep driveway, and our neighbor's houses. All of it looked completely normal, 
but I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something really wrong and different with it all. It felt as if reality was warped or something. I stood on the front porch for a minute or so, trying to figure out what felt so incredibly wrong with my neighborhood. After a while, though I figured I was just being silly and made my way down the driveway. When I was about halfway down, my neighbor who was tending to his garden across the street, looked up towards me, stared at me as if he saw a ghost, his face going completely pale and opened his mouth to speak. Before I could even stare at him in confusion, before he had gotten a single word out, I was back inside my house at my front door about to leave. I was completely shaken. I had no idea how I had ended up back at my front door. I had no idea what I just experienced, and when I pulled the door open it was completely normal. Nothing felt wrong anymore. It was all glaringly normal. The only difference was when I opened my door, again my neighbor was not out front gardening. I decided not to go for a walk that day. Years later, I have no idea what I experienced, and as weird as it sounds, the part that freaks me out the most is how wrong my neighborhood felt despite looking exactly the same. So between the weird teleportation back indoors and my neighbor acting as if he was staring at a ghost, the feeling of wrongness is the thing that bothers me the most. I don't know how to explain it. I didn't feel unsafe, it didn't feel like dread, it just felt like I was looking at a completely different version of my neighborhood at that moment, and I don't think I will ever forget it. I've never really told anyone about this as I'm usually a pretty skeptical person, but I've had no way to explain this. I'm Poised Potion on Reddit A stranger and I walking toward one another on the sidewalks said the exact same thing at the exact same time. I was walking with my boyfriend, and we were thinking about where to have a quick snack. There's a cinnamon roll shop a couple of towns over, so I said, let's go there, you love cinnamon rolls. Except a stranger that was walking in the opposite direction on the sidewalk with her friend said, let's go there, you love cinnamon rolls, at the exact same time, and using the exact same intonation. I quickly gasped and covered my mouth. After a few paces, my boyfriend and I burst out laughing. Did the simulation collapse, or was it just a strange coincidence? I've never really told anyone about this, as I'm usually a pretty skeptical person, but I've had no way to explain this. Kindred Wolf 78 comments, it's a wavelength thing. Thoughts exist like ripples in the ether. If you are on the wavelength, like tuning a radio, you can read that thought like it was your own. Some people can hear the original voice, some just get a download of info without context, voice, or direction, and some people just get a feeling or general sense of meaning. Telepathy, like all psychic gifts, is a natural inborn human talent, just like being athletic. Some are naturally gifted geniuses, some work their whole life for a modicum of skill, and some just come out of the box broken. I'm Specialist Visible 596 on Reddit. I posted a week ago describing my first OBE using the gateway tapes. Although skeptical about my first experience, I feel more confident that it is indeed happening. This time it took less than an hour to achieve. I started my session, as usual, using the formula I previously found successful, focusing on aligning the vibrational tuning with my body's natural vibration. I knew from the second I started that the feeling I had was replicated from my first, full body tingling to the feeling of my body's eagerness to escape. Suddenly I felt my entire body rotate from the lying position I was in to being pressed up against the wall my bed sits against and I ascended out of my body and through the wall at a fast rate of speed. I was expecting to be outside at this point, but I was in a separate, in-between reality. Knowing fully I wasn't asleep and feeling exactly as I did the time before, I had more courage to test the environment. As I was hovering into the darkness that surrounded me, I was looking all around for something to catch my eye, so I could seek it out, but to no avail. I reluctantly opened my eyes back into my body. What's strange is that when I did I realized I was pressed up against the wall in an unnatural position just like I described in the beginning as I rotated and fell through the wall. But it didn't seem right, things were off in my room, such as there wasn't any light under my door, and it's daytime so I proceeded to get up and walk out my door to check, and it was pitch black in my house. Freaked out, I walked back to my room, and I saw my body laying in the same position I started in. 
resting with my eyes closed on my pillow. I've heard someone mention looking at a clock to see if you're awake or in another reality, and the clock wasn't in my room at all. Before I knew it, I awoke in bed with my head on my pillow, completely stunned by how real both realities felt. That's the end of this collection. Tell me which story was the best for you. Comment if you have a strange story to tell or send it to storyscary152 at gmail.com and have it featured in the next collection. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded.